I remember when I suggested that we watch the first Space Jam in order to catch up on the lore, and I think like a good five minutes after we decided, yeah, let's do that, let's make a night of it, I was like, oh my god, I don't want to watch Space Jam. <laughs> it's like it's like carrying the cross or whatever happened in the Bible, I didn't go to church. Anyway, that's all to say, I'm actually excited to see this, like I know it's supposed to be god awful, but it's like, you know when you go into the group chat? Okay, first and foremost, welcome everyone. This is our true, honest, totally real on the spot review of Space Jam A New Legacy or Space Jam 2. We just finished watching the original Space Jam followed by the Space Jam sequel and both Sam and I have quite a few thoughts that we'd like to share with you. Sam has taken quite a few extensive notes. I have just observed the film in its entirety and endured it and I have thoughts of my own, but I feel like it would be most appropriate to give Sam the floor, considering she has done quite a bit of work to get to this point. So Sam, what what thoughts do you have to share about this film? Well, first, I'd like to give the people a spoiler warning. Second, I'd like to talk about the fact that Bugs Bunny dies at the end of the film. It's tragic in a way. There, no, it's there not. Is, it's not an fucking element of tragic. tragic. This movie is hollow. This movie is a weird brand marketing shit and it just like it's fun for five minutes and then it just gets exceedingly more and more empty and soulless and there's a part where they start being like loony because they're the looney tunes and they're not even playing to the character's strengths they don't it's like they forget what each looney tunes does like they do a painted scenery gag with a uh, tweety bird mm -hmm. and then bugs bunny dies so i think First and foremost, let's let's discuss Space Jam. Let's discuss the concept. Uh, the original Space Jam, as I'm sure a lot of people know, is a film about Michael Jordan being sucked into the Looney Tunes world to help play a basketball game against cartoon intergalactic invaders known as the Monstars. It's a simple premise, very cartoony, very fun. There's not much more to say about it. It is a product of the 90s in its entirety. Space Jam 2 definitely feels like a product of the 2020s. Space Jam 2 feels like a product of the era where every movie is a remake of something or a sequel. Mm. Mm -hmm. Where everything is just a cash grab. It's a hollow, unnecessary sequel to a movie that, you know, did not need a follow-up, did not need any sort of uh, continuation whatsoever. It was just purely, you know, good on its own. It was its unique element of, of basketball and cartoon, but uh, Space Jam 2 likes to posit that LeBron James exists within a online space and, and can play basketball with uh, all of the fun, unique characters and properties from the Warner Brothers catalog. Don Cheadle is there uh, as, as a wonderful digital entity that is just radiating bisexual energy. Hold and on. Before we talk about this movie in earnest, I want to say one thing. As you said, Space Jam 1 did not need a follow-up, and yet I want to point out that this movie didn't come out of nowhere. In fact, this is a manifestation of, like, human hubris. Everybody wanted a sequel to Space Jam. Everyone wanted this to happen for many years. We knew it shouldn't. Everyone knew it shouldn't happen, and yet we asked for this. Let's be honest, we asked for this and we knew what we were doing. As someone who has my ear to the ground as far as Space Jam developments, I've heard about this. I knew this was coming for years and years. This is something that did not come, like, without any notice. People have been talking about the quote-unquote LeBron James Space Jam sequel for almost eons now within the Cyberverse, but I don't think there was any way for us to truly deeply anticipate this, what this film is. And frankly, this, this is humorous. This is, this is exactly what we deserve 
for trying to step towards the king that is Space Jam 1. This is the kind of Space Jam movie that would be made today, and it's not the movie we wanted, but it's the movie we deserved. Yeah, actually that transitions nicely into a few things. First of all, the first note that I took just says Death of Art Movies Hell. (laughs) That's about, you know, what we just said. Second, we get right back to what you were talking about before, Kyle, with Don Cheadle and the bisexual lighting. Oh boy. Mm -hmm. The plot of this movie is actually Don Cheadle, like, really trying to date LeBron James. It's it's very fascinating. Don Cheadle is a computer entity known as Algae Rhythm, uh, obviously a, a very deeply clever play on the word algorithm because he's a computer program. So, you know, as, as a computer science major, that is fucking funny. You know, I cracked up when I heard that. But Don Cheadle, as a Warner Brother computer program, approaches LeBron James stating that he would love deeply to take LeBron James's essence his persona, his his face, and just insert it into whatever movies the Warner Brothers company would like to make going forward, essentially deep faking him into every film going forward, a soulless existence within all of cinema. Like Sam said, taking taking the, the soul out of any movies going forward and just making them completely uh, devoid of any artistic value and merit. Uh, so sad, but Don Cheadle really is ultimately the star of this movie because in trying to get LeBron James, he does come off as quite a deeply interesting and charismatic character who is just constantly within the film's world, just swathed in bisexual lighting. And I think it's wonderful for him. He dresses in the most loud and ostentatious suits. He has amazing outfits throughout. He is just beautiful. And and like, I love Don Cheadle. I love him to death. And so his performance in this movie is really the standout of, of any of the Toon Squad or basketball performance. It's a Don Cheadle film first and foremost. The whole algae rhythm thing... It is frankly cringeworthy, but I have to say, by the sheer charisma alone of the character and how he is written, and of course his, like, nice flashy silver suits, he works as a villain somehow very well. Mm -hmm. He's simultaneously the best and worst part of this movie. (laughs) That's a lie, he's not the worst part. I know what the worst part of this movie is. I can think of one thing that I think is the worst. Lay it on us. We will will get to that when we get to that, but Algae Rhythm, Don Cheadle's character, upon being denied by LeBron James. His advances are denied. He goes yandere. He goes complete yandere on us, and he kidnaps LeBron's son and steals him away into the cyberverse. The serververse, sorry. uh, Which is an amalgamation of all of the digital worlds and properties that are owned by the Warner Brothers company, and LeBron, in a desperate attempt to save his own son, gets sucked into the serververse as well, and this leads to our film's entirety its main body, as it were, but it takes a truly amazing amount of time for us to get there. There is a dramatic lead-up into this movie that is, frankly, a little bit boring, and maybe that's my disinterest in LeBron James's personal life, but I did kind of want to see some Looney Tunes, and I did not get Looney Tunes until about, like, maybe 30 minutes into this movie. Yep, it was 30 minutes of just, like, family drama and a man fighting with his son before we saw a single Looney Tune, and then almost immediately immediately we get this setup that it's gonna be like sort of like a heist setup like if you've played mass effect 2 they're like oh Mm -hmm. we're gonna go to all these worlds we're gonna get the gang back together they spend about five minutes on that just rapidly going through a bunch of warner brothers properties and they're like okay good we got everybody fuck that i guess It's 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 a surprisingly on point comparison because what is this not if 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 not getting the gang back together after pretty much a death of the franchise? We need to uh, recruit everyone else, and of course we start out with Bugs Bunny, star of the show, who has been abandoned by all of his former friends, all of his former allies in the Looney Tunes verse. It is no longer a united front like it was in Space Jam One, and we just kind of pop across all of these other Warner Brother worlds to reunite unite the gang as it were and this I think is is the heart of the movie this is the point in the film that I think has the most soul as it were because this is the majority of the film that is carried by 2D animation and as someone who deeply appreciates animation as a medium I truly do think that the 2D animation in this movie is the standout and I know that Space Jam A New Legacy has an unfortunate reputation for not crediting its 2D animators there's a little bit of quote unquote drama 
it's more just them treating the animators as almost second-class citizens. It's unfortunate there is a, a severe lack of crediting of these, these animators in their work, and I don't know. It, it was a sad story to hear because this is the part of the movie that I actually enjoyed the most, yeah. so not great. It's only about five minutes, maybe ten minutes long. Mm -hmm. And you would think the part where they flash around to a bunch of different Warner Brothers movies would be the worst shill part of the movie. It's not. We'll get to that. It's like actually kind of fun if you turn your brain off and you don't think about the capitalist rot that it all represents. Absolutely. Um, there is there is legitimately like standout wonderful moments in that sequence there. I think a lot of people pointed it out, but like, you know, the little, the little Matrix scene is is actually legitimately enjoyable in some sense. I, I, I think like all of these little tie-ins, all of these like these 2D uh, Looney Tunes characters being inserted into some more recent films, some more classic. You know, there's there's artistry there, and I think that the the homage done is fun. And then it very abruptly ends, and not long after, the 2D characters are made 3D, and they all look like Detective Pikachu, but without any of the charm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mm -hmm. look good. Like we've seen nice stylized 3D. It's like okay, it's not a it's not a Disney live action for God's sake, but it's just slightly bad. That's a I think the best way you could describe it, like the animal characters they look all right fur is unnecessarily realized but the the human characters yosemite sam elmer fudd granny porky uh, just por porky pig i guess <laughs> do look a little bit uncanny and well there's some moments that they have later that are uh, deeply deeply unfortunate but yeah uh, at this point in the film uh, our, our characters are now playing basketball against Algae Rhythm, Don Cheadle's character, uh, and his team, the Goon Squad, a special team made out of LeBron James's son's characters from his video game that he makes, because LeBron James's son, Dominic James, he, he makes a video game despite being 12. He's uh, a, apparently like a video game savant. Regardless, these are the monsters of our Space Jam 2, and the thing about these characters characters is that there was zero setup with the monsters in the original you know i'm not saying space jam was a piece of art or anything it was but i'm not saying that at least they were ever present at least they were with the story these guys the opposing team just kind of appear and you know you've got like a bird guy a spider girl who's like kind of cool and then you've kinda just hot. got yeah you've got wet hot who who feels like a throwaway concept that they needed like a fifth dude. What's the fucking concept there? I hate it. Wet and hot. Oh, sorry, he's wet fire. There you go. Don't pat yourself on the back like that. That's a basic terrible concept. I hate it. But they I'm didn't sorry, know me, what to do. Let me correct you there. That is that is wet fire that you're talking about. I, I really do hope that you are not disrespecting my man, wet fire. No, best character in the movie, of course. He is the um, strongest character. So now let's get to some plot again and something that's very important because it's also one of the worst parts of the movie. There are many. The basketball match starts and suddenly they warp everybody who's watching in through their phones. And so this is two things at once. First of all, you know, they set up this thing where if the tunes lo lose, everybody has to stay forever. So we have Sword Art Online, and then the other half of the crowd that's not real people who are stuck in the game is made up of every single Warner Bros. characters they could shoehorn in there. And it's really just Ready Player One again, in mm -hmm. the amount of just like, hey, did you see your favorite character in the background? Hey, look, here's the Iron Giant. Remember the Iron Giant? I remember the Iron Giant. Um, I saw him in the movie. <laughs> yeah, we saw him in Ready Player One. It's <laughs> it's terrible. This is the part. This marks the point in the movie where just everything is terrible. We had a discussion as we were watching. It was like we we could see merit and value in the film, and as soon as everything just started becoming shoehorned in, as soon as there's there's literally a, a, a full sequence of just different properties and different characters rushing onto the scene, and we just kind of went, "Oh, this movie's about to get bad, isn't it?" And then it and did. it did. Kyle. Which one of us is going to talk about Kronos? Look, it's the New Iron Giant. Unlocked. Don't you love the Iron Giant? I remember the Iron Giant from the movie, The Iron Giant? <laughs> what? What does this mean? They didn't set this up. Listen, I love time. Don't get it. Don't get it twisted. I love time travel, but. They're just doing the fucking Days of Future Past thing. I was about to say, 
So you know what time it is if I tap wrist. Time to resume. So the Goon Squad, built up of all of our favorite characters, including especially Wet Fire, my man, they are, you know, just some some stupid one-dimensional characters that exist to play basketball in a, a, a CG 3D space, and that's fun. Uh, it's not. It's it's really just 3D nonsense. But no character within this film. Uh, truly embodies the lack of heart and soul in the Goon Squad as much as Kronos. Kronos is inserted into the game out of nowhere simply because uh, Dominic James, LeBron James' son, uh, decides to sit on the bench for uh, a round of the basketballs. But that's that's not the real reason it happens. Yeah, let's let's be honest here. There is a true reason behind the scenes. The script is flapping in the wind. We can see very clearly what this is trying to elicit. But Kronos, as the name implies, is a man who truly does embody time. And what we witness in this point of the movie is a very blatant ripoff of the, the not so famous but well discussed sequence of the X-Men Days of Future Past film that has the slow motion sequence with Quicksilver. Uh, Kronos decides to slow down time and does a bunch of funny business. Movies. He does quite a bit of funny business. I, I think that it is it is completely natural for us to say that Kronos here is the looniest character in the bin. Bad. Uh, yeah, he, he stops time, he does a bunch of dumb bullshit, and then he shoots the basketballs. And it's, it's just not entertaining. It's just, it's sad. I think sad is a good adjective for it. There's nothing there for me to enjoy. I love time. Don't get me wrong. I fucking love time. But yeah, Kronos is not interesting to me. He's, he's just, he just shows up out of nowhere because the plot demands it and then performs a bunch of uh, crazy, wild, funny business because it would be interesting, I guess, on screen. And that embodies what the entirety of this section of the movie is, is just contrived visual gags and advancements of the plot. There's no heart, there's no soul, it's just the goon squad plays and then the toon squad learns. Like I said before, even when they start being loony so they can win, the bits just don't even make sense. They're not even playing to the character's strengths. There mm -hmm. is one part, there's one joke that works, and it's Wile E. Coyote using an Acme machine and then falling prey to it. Hey, that's a classic Looney Tunes joke. That's the setup, that's how you execute it. Everything mm -hmm. else just makes no sense. There's a part where, like, the big red guy absorbs someone into his finger. Oh, that's not just someone. That's my man, Wet Fire. Yeah, it's Wet Fire. <laughs> okay, let's let's get let's power through to the end of this. So the Toon Squad prevails. LeBron James manages to learn that fun is an integral part of basketball, and that maybe he shouldn't be so domineering towards his son's interests. He manages to get his son back on his side, and Algae Rhythm becomes a member of the Goon Squad, and the two forces face off in what is ultimately a battle for the true fate of all souls here in the basketball game. There's so much flirting. Unsurprisingly, the, the Toon Squad prevails but not not without a cost not without a deep true sacrifice what happens? bugs bunny fucking dies someone has to die this movie cannot be created without a blood sacrifice and bugs bunny the true honest beautiful creature he sacrifices himself for the sake of this film it's it's sad i shed tears and i i just buddy I, you were on your phone at the time you weren't crying i just sorry just gonna give me a moment i just Bugs Bunny doesn't actually die. They do a very good fake out. And like, honestly, I was kind of excited because how amazing would that be if Bugs Bunny had died and then stayed dead? This film would have gone up like a full letter grade. Yeah, if it they actually, to that. it would be kind of amazing if they'd actually gone with it. And for a hot second, you think they are. And then it's just like, no, Bugs is in the real world now, <laughs> which I guess, sure. But I want to live in that world where Bugs Bunny just died at the end of this movie. You just hate Bugs Bunny so much. No, I love Bugs, Bugs Bunny. Bunny I just think that's the ballsiest thing this movie could have done. It would have been deeply impressive. But yeah, so Bugs Bunny sacrifices himself, but ultimately it's an empty sacrifice because he becomes realized. He becomes a... a, a figure in the real world he gets to walk around with lebron james he stops lebron and his wife from having sexual intercourse it's beautiful and then the movie cuts to credits and it's it's just empty 
the whole thing is devoid of, of meaning, purpose, soul, heart. It's just kind of shallow. It happened because people wanted it to happen and Warner Bros. could make money from it and put some product placement in there. It really is the culmination of hubris. Mm-hmm. And I'm glad I watched it. I think we're better because we've seen it now, but I also wish I could have that time back. It's kind of like when you confront your shadow in the Persona series. This is, this is, I think that's quite apt, actually. We faced our shadow, and his name was Algae Rhythm. Uh, and he did try to fuck us, but. He tried to fuck you my know, dad. Couldn't steal my son. Take that so. out. <laughs> <laughs> Do we want to rate this movie? Uh, yeah, let's read it on a negative scale, though. And everybody <laughs> just has to interpret what it means to get whatever negative number out of negative 10. All right. I would rate this movie in a in a negative context. Uh, I will rate Space Jam A New Legacy. I'm going to say a negative 8. That's wild. I was actually going to give it a negative 8, too. Really? Yes. Synchronicity. I love to see it. Negative 8. Destined. Negative 8 feels like an appropriate rating. It looks like two bad basketballs placed on top of each other it's appropriate so if you can don't maybe, watch space maybe jam too just avoid watching it like you don't have to it's it we're in a we're still in a pandemic guys so maybe don't go out to a theaters if you don't have to it's on hbo max i think so don't don't bother with it you don't have to spend money on this movie i want to issue a statement to everyone listening to this right now there's nothing you're going to get out of this movie that you haven't got right here you know what happens you're you know not going to enjoy it you already know what happens you will probably get more enjoyment from hearing two people talk shit about it than actually watching it so really you've you've kind of hit the peak final final note here that i have that we never got to is just uh serial experiments lane that's all i haven't watched it but it sounds on point there'll be like five people in the audience who will see that and be like hey and uh this one's for you guys <laughs> so go out there perform a chaos dunk before the great b-ball plague we have to get out there like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Comment below. Tell us if you saw your favorite Warner Brothers character in the crowd shots. Give us money on Patreon. Hey man, if you loved soulless, uh, money-grabbing movies, maybe you'd love a less soulless, money-grabbing YouTube channel. <laughs> Support us on Patreon. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and have a basketball-tastic day, I want everyone. to escape. <laughs>